In this lesson, I would like to discuss the different types of data that we are now able to collect. We will cover activity data, conversation data, sensor data, as well as photo and video data. Please bear in mind that the format of these data types can be structured, semi-structured or unstructured data. And they can be generated internally or brought in from external sources. The reason I wanted to group these techniques is that they represent some of the biggest business related leaps in data and analytics, which makes them useful for consideration in any data strategy. Almost everything we do nowadays leaves a digital trace. Tons of activity data allow organizations to monitor what we do, how often we do it, and at what time of the day it is taking place. If you think about the things I have done today before sitting down to record this lesson, most of those activities did in fact leave some digital trace or evidence that can and most likely is being collected and analyzed. The phone calls I made created data and depending on who I called, for example, if it's my insurance agent or a customer service department, the actual content of that call may be recorded and analyzed. The gift I purchased for my wife's birthday creates transaction data. Even visiting different websites online for gift ideas creates a whole trail of data, including where I accessed the internet from, what sites I visited, how I interacted with those sites, which products held my attention the longest, and the overall amount of time I spent on different sites. Everything I like on Facebook or share on LinkedIn or Twitter creates a data trail. Even if I choose to switch off my phone and laptop and go for a run, my smartwatch tracks my movements, how far I run, how many calories I burned. Local CCTV cameras would also pick up images along my favorite route. So yes, all of us generate tons of activity data on a daily basis. And in some instances, this can be really valuable to companies. They want to know us better so they can offer us better products tailored to our needs. As I mentioned, many of our phone calls today are recorded. The same is valid for communications we have via chat, emails or social media posts. There's an abundance of conversation data, be it in verbal or text form. Thanks to the fast advances in deep learning, today we have the tools to analyze this data and extract insights from it. Computer algorithms can provide information in two main directions, context and tone. Such information can be very valuable for organizations. The situation is very similar when it comes to photo and video data. The rise of social media and the constantly improving cameras and mobile devices create an abundance of such data. If we add the CCTV recordings produced in most big cities, as well as the data from our smart doorbells, then this source of data becomes even richer. Also consider that some of the more technically sophisticated retail stores are using all the CCTV camera footage and analyze it to better understand how their customers walk through the shops, where they pay attention, and for what duration, so they can make alterations to offer and boost sales. The most tech savvy are applying facial recognition algorithms to track individual shoppers' behaviors. The biggest challenge when it comes to photo and video data is that they can create massive files, which can be tricky to store. It's therefore important to make sure you will actually be able to extract business insights from that data. However, if you're already collecting such information as a matter of routine, perhaps through security footage, finding better ways to use it may not be very expensive at all. I work with one of the leading cruise ship companies, which had hundreds of CCTV cameras all over their ships. All it took was connecting these camera feeds so that the data could be streamed to a platform for analysis. And finally, I wanted to mention sensors. We have mentioned them a few times so far throughout the course. These are tiny devices that are attached to a product or device and transmit a particular type of data. Most modern devices contain several types of sensors in them. The smartphone you carry in your pocket probably has built-in GPS location information, accelerometer speed information, gyroscope, 
orientation, and a proximity sensor, the distance from other people or locations, and an NFC or near field communication sensor, allowing for contactless payments. Sensor data can be an important source for very powerful insights to improve productivity and maintenance.